Hello everyone, my name is Ian, you're watching Big Rock Moto, and thank you so much for tuning in today. Now, if you clicked on this video, I'm guessing you fall into one of two camps. One, you've been a fan of my content for a long time for adventure and dual sport bikes, mainly. Number two, the second camp you might fall in, is you might be genuinely interested in purchasing this model from Harley Davidson. Now I promise you, either camp you fall in, this video is gonna have something for you, I promise. Now before I go any further, I do have to come clean about something. Even though I'm trying to wear my journalistic hat while I go through this review, it is obvious to any of you who know me that I'm not an American V-twin rider. I've never found the riding position or the style of cruiser bikes to really be my cup of tea. However, as I've transitioned over the past few years to riding a lot more different styles of motorcycles and reviewing a lot, a lot of different types of motorcycles, I've really become a lot more open-minded. So here's what I would ask of you. Please have an open mind as you go through this review, even if you're not typically a fan of cruiser style bikes. With the Lowrider ST or the FX LRST and Harley code, Harley Davidson have created a bike that people have been asking for for quite a long time. With a powerful and torquey 117 cubic inch engine, the slim saddlebags, the low slung styling, the blacked out details, the smaller, more sleek fairing, uh, the riding position, um, all the style of this bike, it's really designed to be what Harley calls West Coast style. This is a kind of motorcycle that a lot of customizers have been building for quite a long time, and Harley has now decided to offer one right off the showroom floor. So here's how I'm gonna break down this review for you today. First, I'm gonna show you the riding position and the seat height of the bike. Then I'm gonna take you on a tour all around the motorcycle and show you all of its interesting features and talk about some of the main specs that you care about. Then we're gonna get the bike out on the highway and give you the full riding experience of the Low Rider ST. Then we're gonna come back here and I'm gonna talk about my brutally honest pros and cons to this model. And then we're gonna have some final thoughts. So with that, let's go for a ride. All right, so in my reviews, I always like to show the seating position, seat height, and ergonomics of all the bikes that I review. So let's do that right now. So the Lowrider ST has a seat height of only 28 inches, and I'll put the millimeters here if you're not in the USA. And that makes it one of the lowest for a large displacement motorcycle. That's one of the things that draws people to cruiser bikes of this style is because they can easily reach the ground on both sides. Now, the downside of that is the following. I know I'm gonna get hate mail for this, but here's the problem with cruiser bikes in general. There's variations between them, but here's my issue in general. Is that number one, notice how high the foot peg is. So this is called a mid control. They also make bikes with forward controls, but a normal motor, or I shouldn't say normal, most, uh, a lot of motorcycles that are designed for more uh, sporty riding or to be more comfortable touring bikes, they have the foot peg here under, uh, you know, under the seat. So your foot would normally be somewhere like here. So you see what this does to my angle here of my hip and my spine and my knee. It's not anatomically or physiologically optimal for comfort. So it's, it makes it uncomfortable. So what happens is, and you see also that the handlebar, so I wanna be kind of right here to have my back straight, but the handlebar forces me into a weird position because the handlebar is too far forward and too far up. So a handlebar should not be this high for optimal control. Now, I know it's being done for style and this is how these bikes are and there's a lot of people who are fine with this and that's okay. But what happens is it puts, to, to bend my elbows, because you're not supposed to ride a motorcycle with your arms straight. That's terrible for control and for absorption of bumps and controlling the bike. So I have to lean forward like this and it puts a weird kink in my spine and it's very uncomfortable for me. It also puts, this kind of position puts a lot of weight on your butt and it doesn't allow you really to unweight over bumps or if you're sore to kind of stand up a little bit and stretch out and get the weight off your butt. So this riding position um, is not my thing, but I know it's gonna work for a lot of people. And if you're used to this kind of bike, then you're gonna like it. So uh, anyway, this is all just to keep in mind and I'm just being as honest as I can with you about this. But I feel like if the foot peg was a little bit further back, a little bit lower, and if the handlebar was a little lower and a little bit more like here, that would be a much more comfortable riding position. All right, let's take a look at the specs and features and give you a tour of the Harley Davidson Lowrider ST, also known as the FXLRST and Harley 
code. So let's talk about the important stuff first, the engine. So you've got the Harley Davidson Milwaukee 8 117. This is their big boy engine. This thing is 117 cubic inches or around 1900 cc. It puts out 103 horsepower and most importantly around 125 foot pounds of torque which is a heck of a lot of torque and it comes in at something like 3500 rpm. Now you can see it's an air cooled engine as you would expect and it's got the push rods which are beautifully detailed here with this chrome. So about the only chrome on this bike would be uh, some of the engine finishings and that's about it a little bit you can see on the fork list, but that's about it. Otherwise, it's pretty blacked out. So, let's talk about some of the other specs. Of course, you've got a six-speed transmission with a hydraulic clutch. Uh, no, I'm sorry, cable-operated clutch. Uh, let me correct myself there. Uh, let's look at the chassis. So, you can see the frame of the bike here, uh, starting with the wheels and tire suspension brakes. So, you've got a 19-inch front wheel. This is a, it's a 110 width, so pretty typical size for a bike like this. And it's this beautiful bronze finish, which I really think looks very, very nice on this model. So, let's uh, finish the front of the bike here first. So, you've got an inverted front fork, which is a sporty uh, design for Harley and it, it contributes to the bike's improved handling and it has uh, just under five inches of travel there on the front fork. So then for the brakes what you have are 300 millimeter twin discs with a four piston caliper on each side. So pretty powerful brakes for a Harley Davidson. Nice to see that because this bike is meant for a little bit more spirited riding in the canyons. Let's move to the uh, rear of the bike and take a look. So you've got a pretty wide 180, 70, 16 inch rear tire. So it's a 16 inch rear wheel. Again you can see that bronze wheel on there. And then you've got a rear brake disc which is let's see 292 millimeters with the single piston caliper and of course you do have ABS standard on this bike. I forgot to mention the rear shock which is down inside here somewhere which you can't really see uh, but you've got about 4.3 inches of travel and you do have a preload adjustment but no other adjustments on the suspension and the front suspension is not adjustable. Some other things you're going to want to know. We already looked at the riding position and the seat height. The tank is 5 gallons or about 20 liters. You're estimated to get around 45 miles a gallon so you're probably going to be looking for gas around the 150 mile mark. You can probably go a little bit longer than that if you're easy on the throttle which is not going to be easy to do because it's so much fun to ride this bike with all the torque it has. This bike weighs fully fueled up 721 pounds so this style of motorcycle, this genre is not known for its light weight. This bike is no different but because every Everything sits pretty low, the weight's fairly low, the seat's low, it doesn't feel super, super heavy when you're getting off and on it. And of course we have to get to the price, so the MSRP is $21,749 base price in the USA, uh, and then if you want this gunship gray color, that's another $450, bucks. otherwise it comes in black for that base price. And of course, being a Harley, there's a ton of Harley accessories available, things like stereo systems and other things like that you can get from your Harley dealer. Alright, so here's my favorite part of the review, taking you on a tour, kind of showing you the interesting uh, features and design and, uh, and all the, uh, the different cool things with this model. So you can see the front fairing, so it's a classic Harley styled front fairing. Now some other reviewers have been confused about why it has these vents in it. They are vents designed to equalize the pressure so that when the wind hits this, some pressure goes through and you don't have as much wind buffeting for the rider. So it's designed to provide more comfortable riding experience, less wind buffeting. So they're actually scientifically designed to do that. We've we already talked about the front wheels, tires, and brakes. You can see the front uh, fender here, which is here that made out of metal, which is nice. You can see the LED front headlight here, which is kind of cool halo ring around it, which I think looks really cool. Incandescent turn signals would like to see LED turn signals, but they are made of metal, so that's nice. You can see the frame chassis of the bike coming around here, side of the fairing, get this classic Harley Davidson logo fuel tank we've talked about to get fuel simply unscrew this doesn't have a lock or anything you can see this they I think they call this like the heavy breather intake something like that but in any case this is your air filter so the good news is the air filter is really easy to service I think it looks pretty badass pardon my French sticking it here on the side like that We've kind of talked about the engine already. You can see the uh, riders, uh, foot pegs, controls are up here. The exhaust coming out here. You do get quite a bit of heat on this exhaust, which you would expect. Now the saddlebags. Okay, so let's talk about the saddlebags. You can lock the saddlebags here. 
Uh, otherwise they operate with this latch and they open like this. They have this netting and this gas shock so that they open smoothly and they don't open too far. They are small. I don't know the exact capacity, but they don't have a lot of capacity. So they're really designed to make the bike look slim and, you know, keep the styling of the bike uh, to be what it is. They don't want to put super wide saddlebags on this bike. Now, if you want to take the bags off, you simply pull this lever out, unlock it like this, and the bags slide off. So there's what it looks like without the bags. It still looks good without the bags. A lot of people will like that look. I like how easy they are to take off. I think that's a great design. Uh, but personally for me, I really like the styling of the bike with the bags on and also it's very convenient because you can, uh, so here's putting the bike's bags back on, just like that, and then lock them on, now they're good to go. I also like the convenience of just having storage on the bike uh, for, for your for taking your rides. Moving our way around the back, you can see the blacked out dual outlet exhaust here. Talked about the tires and wheels. The brake light, turn signals, so incandescent turn signals. Big LED brake tail light here. License plate, of course. Moving around to the left or the port side of the bike, if you want to do this in nautical terms, you can see here down in here, we've got, it's kind of hard to see, but this is where your big belt drive is, down here, so you've got belt drive, you've got this side of the engine, probably clutch transmission, stuff like that. You can see the spark plug wires here, which is a cool detail, makes it look very mechanical, very old school, sort of. And you can see they also have these little wings on the fairing that also help optimize the wind flow here on the bike. Now let's jump on board, show you the controls and the dashboard real quick, turn off my hazard lights. So, what you have is, you've got these small, nicely detailed mirrors that are a little bit close in, but I think that's for styling, so I tend to kind of see about half my shoulder in the mirrors. You have a cable operated clutch with no adjustment. You have a brake lever, no adjustments for the reach on a brake lever, but that's not typical in this segment. Um, now, it's controls. This control here, this button cycles through different uh, displays here, trim meters, fuel mileage, clock, RPM, things like that. We'll show that when we ride it horn, which doesn't sound very Harley-like. <laughs> I think they should make it a deeper tone. Uh, cruise control, this bike does have cruise control, which is very, very nice. To activate it, you push in this button and then plus and minus to change the speed. Works great. Great feature to have. I'm so glad that it has that standard. Turn signals, which to me are weird. I don't know why they're doing turn signals like this, uh, but it reminds me of the old, old, older BMWs that had this layout. I'm not a fan of it, but you do get used to it. It works fine. High beam switch, uh, flash to pass. Here you've got hazard lights, start button, engine on and off switch there. Now, talking about the dashboard, um, I think they call this like the tech display or something. It's very small, doesn't have a lot of stuff on it. So you've got a fuel gauge, you've got a speedometer, and then you have a readout which you can cycle through trip meters, range, clock, RPM, odometer, things like that. Then you have your all your dummy lights or idiot lights here, you know, neutral light, fuel light, ABS, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff tire pressure if you have that. Um, yeah, so pretty small dash, but they wanted to do that to keep the, the minimal, the minimalistic, you know, styling uh, of this bike. Putting a big dashboard on it would really change the feel and look of the bike, and they didn't want to do that. So it's really kind of like the display, like you might get on a bicycle or something, but but uh, it does work. It does give you what you need. I do wish it was a little bigger, a little bit more contrast, because it can be a little bit hard to see in the sun. All right, let's get started on the Lowrider ST, show you what this beast is like to ride. Get my gloves on here, I've got my 360 camera rolling, get the kickstand up, and then let's fire this beast up. So to start the bike, you go to this position here, you'll hear the fuel pump prime, see the dashboard come on, and then all that's left to do... And you've got that classic Harley sound, it sounds great. So personally, for me, one of the first things I noticed when I started riding this bike about a month ago, I've had this bike about a month actually, I think, for filming and for testing, which has been great. Thank you so much, Harley. One of the first things I did notice was that, um, and I talked about this already, but my arms feel really outstretched, my legs feel really high and forward. So it just feels awkward for me personally, but that's gonna depend on what kind of bikes you're used to. So that's a totally personal thing.
One of the things that <laughs> uh, one of the things that surprised me the most about jumping on this bike as somebody who's really not used to riding cruisers or touring cruisers or American V-Twins is just how strong this engine is. I mean, from almost any RPM, this engine, not only does it have that classic Harley sound without being too loud, but man, it pulls like a freight train. It That 125 foot-pounds of torque and 103 horsepower, I mean, even though this bike is relatively heavy at over 700 pounds, this thing is quick. I mean, for a bike in this class, for this style of bike, this thing is no slouch. It can really get moving. And that torque is very, very, very addicting to do this <laughs> and twist the throttle. Um, so uh, what are the other things that you notice right away? Um, the wind protection is fairly good for your body. It's got this wide fairing. The windshield is a little bit short, so it doesn't have a lot of buffeting, but it does kind of dump the winds about uh, two thirds of the way up my face shield. At my height, I'm five foot 11, about 180 centimeters. So I do get wind on my helmet, which in the summer like this now, when it's hot, I do appreciate kind of like that. Uh, in the winter, it might be a little bit chilly. Oh, it's a rock, that's not good. So the wind protection is pretty good. We talked about the riding position. Uh, the and so the let's talk more about the engine. So, you know, it's that huge V-twin engine. So you do get, you do feel some of the vibration of the engine through the bike. But I think that's what the customers want. That's what people are used to. You want to feel like you're riding something with a big beastie engine. You know, um, this is not a scooter or something where you want it to be totally isolated. You you want that feeling. This thing is, is legitimately pretty quick. All right, now let's talk about the handling. This is another thing that really surprised me on this Lowrider ST is you can actually get this bike through the corners pretty well. And I have to admit against, you know, with my personal bias of a little bit against cruisers and some of the riders who don't seem to know how to corner and they always get stuck behind them on these roads in the big groups. But man, if you, if you know how to ride this thing, you can really get a move on with this bike. It, it has good cornering clearance, so you're not scraping things. You have to work pretty hard to scrape uh, or reach the cornering limit clearance of this bike. And so I really, really appreciate that because on roads like this, on a nice day, I want to open it up and get through these corners. I, I don't like to ride real slow. bike handles really really well for what it is I always find myself going pretty fast on this bike because it's deceiving how fast you're actually going uh, the ride quality I find the ride to be pretty smooth it has enough suspension travel and it seems to be really pretty well controlled that it's not bouncy or rough uh, of a ride uh, now keep in mind I'm only I'm about 200 pounds or around 90 kilograms so I'm not super heavy and I'm obviously not riding with a passenger Let's talk about the brakes for a second. So if I accelerate to highway speed, 55, 60 miles an hour, the brakes, the brakes are very strong on this. I'm really surprised. I've heard people complain about some Harleys with the brakes, but they did a good job with the braking system on this bike. It's not the most powerful, but I think for the people who buy this kind of bike, it's gonna be more than enough power to get them stopped if a car jumps out in front of you or a deer jumps out in front of you, which does often happen here where I live. So the brakes are great. And you see how I just, this bike makes me want to ride a little bit aggressively, which I just didn't expect for something, you know, in this segment. So I think Harley did a great job with the overall chassis and handling of this bike. They said that they invented a new category, Sport Touring, which I really had to chuckle because, of course, the word for it, Sport Touring has been around a long time, uh, really since the 70s, probably. I think BMW invented it. Um, but uh, I guess for Harley, maybe this is Sport Touring. So see, I'm going pretty, pretty good pace through this corner. Most people who ride the style of bike won't ride like this. And uh, I'm not having any issues with scraping anything. And I feel in very good control. 
Now another thing you're going to notice on this bike is the tall gearing, which again is typical for cruisers, but I'm only in third and fourth gear on this road. Um, the fuel cutoff is around 5700 RPM, but you're probably never going to hit that because it's not the style of engine. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not the style of engine that you're going to really rev out all the way like a sport bike or something. Um, so you're going to use that mid-range pull, that mid-range grunt that it has. But if I go into sixth gear, and it does have a gear indicator, I mean that's really too high of a gear for 45 miles an hour. I got to go back down to, to fourth. But I'll show you that here in a second. We'll get up to some higher speeds. All right, let's do some acceleration on the Lowrider ST. Sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, a hundred. So see on that run I never got out of fourth gear and I already had a hundred miles an hour which I have to be really careful with my speed here on public roads. So I think for any, just about anybody who buys this bike, you're going to find the acceleration far more than adequate and very engaging and, and even thrilling for some people. It's very quick with as much horsepower and torque um, that it has. Let me do another acceleration run for you guys here. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. <laughs> That's very, very fun to do. Uh, now, a couple things I wanted to point out. Uh, gear shifting. The gear shifting is pretty smooth for a bike like this. It's a little clunky compared to what I'm used to, but that's just how these bigger engines are. Uh, of course, you're not getting a quick shifter. The bikes of this genre don't have that and don't don't need that for the way that these bikes are ridden. Uh, oh, another thing I wanted to mention. So this bike, one thing that I, I don't like, and I'm going to talk about this later, is that there's no traction control system on this bike. I think Harley calls it something like RDRS, or I'll put that below. But anyway, the point is that the bike has ABS brakes, which is great, but I feel like with 125 foot-pounds of torque, especially if you have a slippery road or it's cold or you have gravel or anything like that or you're in a corner and you'll accelerate a little bit too fast not having any sort of traction control as a safety net in 2022 seems like a huge huge miss to me and i'm just being honest about how i feel about this that's a huge miss and even for me as a pretty experienced rider i'm experienced at going fast on roads like this i'm in the back of my mind i'm thinking wait you know i'm so used to riding bikes with a traction control that I can't just crack this thing wide open mid corner, especially if the road's a little bit slippery. The bike doesn't have any system to intervene to, to help you correct that. And I think for the types of folks that buy this bike, I think having some traction control, uh, you know, would be a huge safety advantage that you would probably never notice. It would just be invisible behind the scenes but would prevent you from having certain kinds of accidents. So I think it's a huge miss that this bike with this much power and the way that it's designed to be ridden kind of in a sporting manner doesn't have that. So when you're cruising at the higher speeds, like 65, 70, 75 miles an hour, or up above like 120 kph, I do wish for a little bit taller windshield, which I do think they probably offer in the catalog or there's aftermarket for that, because it does start to get a little windy and blustery at those higher speeds. And of course, I do, I do have to keep bringing up this riding position. I, I just don't think that this riding position is comfortable. And again, this is depending on where you're coming from, from other bikes you've owned, from your own physiology and everything. But I've only been riding for like less than half an hour and I'm already uncomfortable. Because it curves my back and it curves my spine in an unnatural way. The, it wants to put my arms straight, which is not how you ride a motorcycle with your arms straight. You ride it with your arms bent, so you have more control and more, more motion and fluidity. You don't ride like this, that's ridiculous. And the legs are in the wrong position too, so they're too far forward and they're too, my, my feet are too high up. So to transition my feet down when I stop or just to control the bike, this is not a, where your legs or feet really want to be. And it pushes my knees up, you know, up here high with the gas tank at a very strange angle with my hips, so it's just uncomfortable. 
All right, we're back from the ride. I hope you all enjoyed going on that ride with me on this beautiful late summer day. So what are the pros and cons as I see it to this bike? Now, I've spent the last three to four weeks testing this bike in different conditions beyond just what I showed in the video, obviously, and I have a pretty good idea of what I like and what I don't like. So what are the pros? Well, for me, one of the, there's a couple of main things that stand out. Um, pardon my French, but I think this is a badass looking motorcycle. Even though I've never really been a fan of cruiser styling in the past, there's something about this bike. I actually really do appreciate the way it looks. It turns a lot of heads and a lot of people really like the look of this bike. The other thing that I really enjoy about this bike is the engine. It has a lot of character. It has the classic Harley sound to it. But most importantly for me, it has a ton of power. So a lot of power, a lot of torque, and in any gear, this thing rockets you forward. Now, it's not a sport bike, it's not an S1000RR, it's not designed to do that, but it's a lot quicker than you might think, and the torque really helps a lot with, uh, in those situations. Some other things I appreciate about the bike, I've ridden a lot of other cruiser bikes actually, despite not having owned too many of them. And a lot of cruisers, they scrape when you go through the corners. And that's something that I really, really hate. Now this bike doesn't seem to do that very easily. I was riding it fairly aggressively over the past several weeks and I have barely ever scraped the, the pegs or anything going through the corners, getting some more aggressive lean angle. So I really appreciate uh, that they've done that because uh, they, they say this is like Harley Sport Touring, which makes sense, I suppose, in a relative sense for Harley Davidson. And you can ride it relatively aggressively for a bike this big and heavy. I also like the low seat height. That makes the bike a lot less intimidating to move around when you're getting on and off. Although you still do feel the weight of the bike. And we're about to talk about some of the cons to that in a second. The other thing I like about this bike is that, you know, this is something that customizers have been doing for a long time. This general style, the bigger engine, sort of a hopped up performance Harley. And you're getting it out of the box. It looks amazing, it sounds amazing. If I were you, I wouldn't change a thing on it. I would just maybe change the seat or something or little things like that, maybe the windshield. But it looks and sounds so good as it is, I don't think you're gonna have to do a lot. So what are the downsides to the Lowrider ST? Well, I suppose you could say the price, but honestly, I think the price is really competitive with you know, other offerings out there at this level. Uh, the big downside for me, and I've talked about this already, is really just the riding position. And I know that I'm speaking to two audiences here. One audience is gonna say, yeah, you're right. It's a crazy riding position. Why would you have that? The other audience is gonna say, no, we like the cruiser riding position. We're fine with the way it is. But just being honest, what I've experienced, I get to ride tons of different motorcycles, scooters, sport bikes, adventure bikes, dual sports, standards, uh, cruisers, whatever it is. And the riding position of this, with the pegs where they are and the handlebars where they are, I don't find it to be comfortable. And I can tell you that a chiropractor would have a field day sort of tearing this thing apart in terms of how it's set up. Now, I know that it is designed uh, for a styling aesthetic to look a certain way and to get that seat really down low. And that's the compromise that you're gonna to have to live with. A lot of people are okay with this, you're used to that. So it's just gonna be personally up to you. I'm just telling you what I've experienced. And this is not just an issue with this model, but a lot of uh, sort of bikes in this genre. Also that riding position, not only can it be uncomfortable, but also it's not really good for control, uh, getting on and off, uh, maneuvering the bike at low speeds or in emergency situations when you have to make a quick maneuver. Having your feet forward of you instead of sort of underneath your knee is really not optimal for motorcycle control. So it's really a, a, a story of form over function. Final thoughts on the Harley Davidson Low Rider ST. Now, I was very upfront with you at the beginning of this review that motorcycles like this and this genre have really never been my exact preference. However, I've really started to change my perspectives as I've reviewed and ridden and tested more motorcycles over the last several years. And I've really come to appreciate the styling, the torquey engine, the sound, and just the overall uh, sort of badass, pardon my French, attitude that this bike delivers. Now, is this a bike that I'm personally thinking of adding to my stable? No, it, it just doesn't meet my needs for the way I like to ride. But it doesn't mean that it's not an amazing motorcycle it, and it's not a great bike that you should really have on your list if you're looking for something in this segment. You definitely should take a test ride. Overall, I think with the Lowrider ST, Harley Davidson has done a great job listening to their customers and delivering what they've been asking for for a long time. So I really genuinely hope this review was useful and informative. If it was, please subscribe, please do all the things to support my channel and there's ways to do that in the description below. Other than that, please ride safe. We'll see you out there. We'll see you in the next review.